Well, to discuss this case in the crackdown on insider trading, as uh, oh, while well, we're joined by Britain's best regulatory lawyer of 2008, he's Simon Morris, he's from CMS, Cameron McKenna. Simon, thank you so much for coming in. These are very hard uh, crimes to prove, aren't they? Yeah. The difference between market abuse or insider dealing and murder is there is no smoking gun, no corpse, and very often no witnesses. So FSA has achieved a significant success with the jailing of this fairly prominent, albeit retired, city figure. 2001, 2008, no convictions. 2008, we've already seen some happen since then. What's changed? What has changed is a change of policy. Up to 2008, FSA tended to concentrate on a power called market abuse, which is a rule book power which is dealt with by FSA's committees. So not a criminal Not act. criminal. There has been a change of management at FSA, a new approach, and FSA has started taking criminal prosecutions, whereas previously it could have simply brought a market abuse case. Does it have the teeth? FSA has the teeth, FSA has the power. All it needed was a change of policy and the determination. It started off, it had got some fairly small fish. It got a father, it got a son, it got some private investors. It has now got someone who, not a central city figure, is peripheral to the city. And it has got the press coverage. We're here today talking about him. We would not have been talking about a market abuse case. He has been carted off to jail. I believe a victory like this for FSA sends a fairly clear message to the city that FSA, under rather new management on the enforcement side, is out to ensure that insider dealing is much less easy to get away with than Margaret, the present. Margaret Cole who's head of enforcement yes, there absolutely. now. This She's is... changed the game to some yes. extent. A policy brought in intentionally by Margaret Curl three or four years ago is we'll go for the difficult target. We're prepared to argue our case before judge and jury. It's a higher standard. It's more difficult. We're prepared to lose some cases, but those we win, we will win, and the message will reverberate. And I think that's what we're seeing today. Now, you described her as the business, haven't you, in the past? I have. I, I believe, and a formidable force for the FSA. Now, does she need more powers? I mean, we've already said that they have enough teeth, but do they need even more? FSA has got every power it wants. It can investigate you, it can send you to prison. Firms are now required to tape every call, so it should be easier to detect. FSA has got a new expensive market monitoring system, so it can detect unusual movements before announcements, as I think was caught, caught out Mr. Calvert. It has all the powers. What it has got is the determination what it has also needs, I think, is the manpower to put 20, 30, 40 people on a major case and to investigate doggedly for two years. And what's interesting with Calvert is the man who worked with Calvert, who was proceeded against for market abuse, in return for him giving evidence against Calvert, that was done and dusted two years ago. It has taken FSA a further two years' hard work to bring the Calvert case to judge and jury and to obtain the conviction. And I think that shows that effort will produce its own rewards when it comes to fighting insider dealing. And that's just for, as you put him, a peripheral figure in the city. What about a Mr. Big in the city? It could take even longer here. It could. There is no smoking guns, there is no corpse, there are no witnesses, the evidence is different to come by. You need to be really determined. I think FSA's next scalp has got to be a significant one, someone more than a retired stockbroker who may have entered into deals with a friend of his who used to run a chain of bookmakers. It has got to be a central figure, and I'm certain that FSA is determined, if there is such a central figure, to catch him or her next time. Do you believe there is? I'm sure there is. If you look at FSA's own figures, there's roughly 20 to 25 percent what's called informed movement before announcements of major takeovers. Now, some may be coincidence, some may be smart analysts, but there's got to be a core there of people who know what's going on and deal in advance of announcements. Very quickly, it's not a victimless crime, is it? No. You're the victim, I'm the victim. The City of London is a victim every time there's insider dealing or market abuse. It destroys confidence and it cheats the honest investor. Simon Morris, thank you very much indeed for You're joining us. You're very welcome. Us. Simon Morris there from CMS, Cameron McKenna.